So now what Montreal does is he goes through and looks at the value of these two expectation values. He looks at the value, in particular, of the average, right? This one here, one of the two maximum entropy constraints. And then he also looks at the value of this constraint here, how that changes over time. So let's look at the average of the log of the price. Okay. This is the first thing that's constrained, because remember, it's a Gaussian distribution in x, where x is log p, log of the price, log price. Okay. So these are the two quantities that are being fixed if we want to work in price space as opposed to log price space. So the first thing he points out is that the average of the log of the prices okay, is a slowly increasing function of time, except for a funny little blip here. Okay. So this is something you would expect, right? Over time, the average log price, and in fact the average price as well, is going to increase, and it's going to increase solely because of inflation. Okay. A good that cost a dollar 10 years ago will generally cost more than a dollar today. Okay. Inflation is a multiplicative process. But what he draws your attention to is this column here. This is the variance of the log price over time. And what you can see in the variance of log price is that over 75 years of the Sears Roebuck catalog, and it's important to say, you know, both world wars, right? Enormous social change. So here they're selling buggy whips, and here they're selling cassette tapes. Right? Okay. Enormous economic change. So certainly the overall prices have gone up, right? They go from 0.1 in log price space to 4. In other words, prices increase by a factor of what, 2, 4, 8, 16, by a factor of 16, okay? The variance of the log of the prices stays almost constant. It's roughly a factor of 2, okay? The deviation, in other words, from the average price, or the average log price, the squared deviation from the average log price, is constant at around 2 over 75 years. And Montreal says, this is worthy of explanation. This here we already understand. We understand why prices grow, but we don't understand why their variance stays constant. Why is it the case that the Sears Roebuck catalog, presumably the people building the catalog here and building the catalog here, are an entirely different group? Why is it the case that they were able to, or somehow ended up, doing the following, right? Keeping this variance constant. Okay. And one of the things he notes, okay, is the following, that let's say in 1900, okay, the log price had a certain distribution and indeed a certain variance, sigma, right? In 1975, if every single good in the Sears Robot catalog was still in the catalog in 1975 and every single good inflated at the same rate, then, okay, yes, the mean would go up, okay, the mean would go up, but all these goods, all these columns here, would all grow by the same amount. So if every price, P, was multiplied by the same factor, alpha, okay, then, of course, every log price, log P, is simply added to log alpha. So, okay, you would expect the variance to stay constant in that very particular case, but otherwise, allowing for the natural drift of goods, and in particular, allowing for different rates of inflation, allowing for alpha in particular to be a random variable just as it was previously in our multiplicative model of language growth. Okay. Once alpha becomes a random variable, then generically speaking, what's going to happen is the variance will rise because some goods will multiplicatively, over time, just randomly accrue lots of really large multiplications. They'll become expensive really quickly, okay? Sort of like, let's say, a college education, apparently. And other goods, okay, will deflate even. They'll become cheaper. So one of the things you see in the Seals Robot catalog is that women's dresses become cheaper because the materials to make them become synthetic and we become better and better at making synthetic dresses, okay? So other goods, in fact, deflate very quickly. Another, another uh, good that deflates quickly, although it's not presumably a dominant feature of the Sears Roebuck catalog in the early years, is computers, okay? So the cost of a device 
with the same computing power as something 10 years ago is minuscule compared to the price it was then, even in absolute terms. So there's some goods deflate enormously, some goods inflate enormously, you know, in the organic, larger scale consumer culture, but, okay, what we find is in the data, the deviations, the squared deviations from the mean in log space stay constant. Okay. That's against the expectations that we have, and the problem is to explain it. Okay. 